Welcome to our detailed retelling of one of the most iconic fairy tales of all time, Hansel and Gretel. This beloved story, originally told by the Brothers Grimm, is full of adventure, danger, cleverness, and courage. Tozer begins by emphasizing the importance of pursuing God with urgency. It's not a passive journey but an active one. From the very beginning, he introduces us to the idea that the hunger for God is placed in every heart by God himself. This hunger, though often dulled or ignored by worldly distractions, is the driving force behind spiritual growth. He explains that God is not far from us, yet we often fail to see Him because of the clutter in our lives, our preoccupations with material possessions, our endless concerns about the future, or our insistence on relying solely on human understanding. This opening section of the book establishes a powerful notion, pursuing God is not just an individual task, it is a divine invitation. God is not hiding from us. In fact, He actively seeks us and places a longing in our hearts for something more, something eternal. This awakening to God's nearness and our need for Him is the starting point of the spiritual journey Tozer invites us on. As we dive deeper into the first part of the book, Tozer insists that our pursuit of God must begin with a genuine recognition of His presence. This presence is not limited to the pages of scripture or the walls of the church. It permeates all of life. Tozer is clear, we do not pursue God because He is distant or inaccessible. We pursue Him because He is here, right now, and He desires to be known by us. In this next part of the book, Tozer speaks about the veil that stands between humanity and God. This veil is not a physical one but a spiritual barrier, woven by years of sin, disobedience, and spiritual neglect. It's a veil of self, self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and self-centeredness, that prevents us from truly experiencing God. Tozer is blunt in his assessment, if we want to draw near to God, we must tear this veil down. This part of the book takes us through the process of breaking down our reliance on self and learning to depend solely on God. Tozer paints a vivid picture of how our ego, our need for control, and our reluctance to surrender to God are the true obstacles that keep us from experiencing the fullness of His presence. He likens this veil to the one that once stood in the temple, separating the people from the Holy of Holies, where God's presence dwelled. Just as Christ tore that veil when He died on the cross, so too must we tear down the veil within our hearts that keeps us from fully entering into God's presence. Tozer emphasizes that this is not an easy process. It requires humility, repentance, and a willingness to give up everything we think we know about ourselves and the world. It requires a dying to self. But once the veil is torn, what awaits on the other side is the pure, unfiltered presence of God, a presence that brings peace, joy, and fulfillment beyond anything the world can offer. As the journey continues, Tozer leads us to the understanding that God is not confined to sacred spaces or special occasions. He is present in every moment of every day. This realization transforms the way we live our lives. In this section of the book, Tozer stresses that God desires to be with us not only in our quiet times of prayer but in the mundane tasks of life, when we're at work, when we're at home, when we're alone, and when we're with others. This part is where Tozer gets practical, explaining that we can experience God in the midst of our daily routines if we only learn to recognize His presence. He describes how we often compartmentalize our lives, separating the spiritual from the secular, when in reality, there is no such division. All of life is spiritual when lived in communion with God. Tozer encourages readers to develop a continual awareness of God's presence, an awareness that transforms every moment into an opportunity for worship. He teaches that we can walk with God as Enoch did, living in constant fellowship with Him, 
no matter where we are or what we are doing. This is not about escaping the world or retreating into a monastic lifestyle, it's about learning to see God in everything and inviting Him into every aspect of our lives. Tozer tackles one of the most challenging aspects of the spiritual journey, the call to relinquish our attachment to material possessions. He takes the reader through the biblical story of Abraham and Isaac, illustrating how God called Abraham to surrender the one thing most precious to him, his son, Isaac. Tozer uses this story to demonstrate that in order to pursue God fully, we must be willing to let go of anything that we hold more dear than him. Tozer is careful to point out that it's not the possessions themselves that are the problem, but rather the hold they have on our hearts. He urges readers to examine their lives and see what they are clinging to, what they are afraid to give up. It might not be wealth or material goods, it could be a relationship, a career, or even a dream. Whatever it is, Tozer insists that it must be surrendered if we are to truly pursue God. But this is not a call to asceticism or poverty for its own sake. Tozer explains that when we surrender everything to God, we don't lose anything. Instead, we gain everything. The blessedness of possessing nothing is that we are freed from the tyranny of things, and our hearts are set free to pursue God with abandon. Moving into the next part of the book, Tozer shifts focus to the abundance of God's presence. He reassures readers that once they begin pursuing God, they will never run out of Him. God is infinite, and His presence is inexhaustible. This realization brings a deep sense of security to the believer. No matter how much we seek God, no matter how much we experience of Him, there will always be more to discover, more to experience, more to enjoy. This section is one of the most comforting parts of the book, as it reminds readers that they are not on a fruitless or finite journey. The pursuit of God is not like a race where you eventually reach the finish line. Rather, it's an eternal journey, one that leads deeper and deeper into the heart of God. And the more we experience of Him, the more we want to know. There is no end to His beauty, His goodness, His love. Tozer uses this part of the book to reassure readers that God's presence is not something we have to earn or deserve. It is freely given, and it is always available. We do not have to fear that God will withhold Himself from us if we pursue Him with sincerity. His desire to be with us is greater than our desire to be with Him. In this pivotal section of the pursuit of God, Tozer discusses the concept of surrender. He challenges readers to let go of their need for control and to fully trust God with every aspect of their lives. This, Tozer says, is the essence of faith, not just believing in God, but trusting Him completely, even when we don't understand His ways. Surrender, Tozer explains, is not a one-time act but a continual posture of the heart. It's about releasing our grip on our own plans, our own desires, and even our own understanding of what is best. This is perhaps the hardest part of the pursuit of God, because it requires us to give up our autonomy and place our lives entirely in God's hands. But surrender is not something to fear. Tozer reassures readers that when we surrender to God, we are not losing anything of value. Instead, we are gaining the freedom to live the life God intended for us. It is only when we let go of our need for control that we can fully experience the peace and joy that comes from living in harmony with God's will. As Tozer leads us into the final sections of the book, he shifts from the challenges of the pursuit to the joy that comes from it. The pursuit of God is not a burdensome task, it is a source of deep and lasting joy. This joy is not dependent on our circumstances or external conditions. It comes from the assurance that we are walking with God, that we are living in His presence, and that we are fulfilling the purpose for which we were created. Tozer makes it clear that this joy is not something we have to wait for until the end of our journey. It is available to us right now, in the midst of the pursuit. 
The closer we draw to God, the more we experience His joy, and the more we realize that this is what we were made for. This joy is the natural outflow of a life lived in pursuit of God. It is the reward for those who seek Him with all their heart. Thank you for joining us on this journey through A. W. Tozer's The Pursuit of God. This book is more than just a collection of words, it's an invitation to a lifelong journey, a journey that leads us ever closer to the heart of God. Whether you're just beginning your pursuit or you've been on this path for years, remember that God is always near, waiting for you to seek Him. The pursuit of God is the greatest adventure of life, and it is one that will bring you more joy, peace, and fulfillment than you can imagine. If you've enjoyed this summary, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of spiritual classics. Keep pursuing God, and may His presence fill every part of your life.